Hey, what's going on YouTube? We're finally back. We uh, have our crankshaft back, so now it's time to continue with uh, BQ37 VHR build. So stick around, see how it goes. sticking up off of these aluminum surfaces or these uh, steel surfaces. Uh, if, if you can see this little color difference here, uh, the bottoms of these main caps on the upper block that basically closes in the crankshaft, goes around the crankshaft, these are, uh, these are steel, probably 4340, something along those lines. And all of this around it, that all had silicone, so you gotta clean off the silicone and uh, you might see a little bit in the grooves. You can uh, get that off uh, relatively easy. Whether a straight razor or anything that's left, you can use, uh, I use like ultra fine Scotch-Brite. And you don't want to put a lot of pressure, just real light, real light pressure. Uh, you know, you'll see some oxidation here and there on the, the edges of the aluminum. I wouldn't worry about that too much. Just kind of smooth it out a little. Don't, don't try to scrub. Uh, harder down on it. You'll, you'll start making low spots and then you know when you torque all this back down it'll you can twist the uh, uh, twist the uh, main boards and everything so this side here is uh, this side is aluminum here so you definitely don't want to scrub too hard on these uh, everything after you get done with everything uh, everything needs to be clean and dry um, because what we're going to do, we're going to put the main bearings in place. We're going to put the upper uh, cylinder block onto the, the block itself. We'll torque everything down. And then we'll measure our crankshaft journals, write those down, and then we'll come back with a dial board gauge and we'll measure uh, these bearings to see the clearance with the old, uh, the old crankshaft. And we'll get back and I'll give you those original numbers shortly. All right, next part of the year, we'll, uh, we'll go ahead and use our OD micrometer, our uh, two to three inch, and we'll use our two inch standard to make sure that this is reading uh, zero, which you can see here that it is. So once we have that checked, we'll come along here, we'll measure uh, journal one, two, three, and then four is kind of out of camera here. so. see here that measured out to be we have it locked in place here so two to three so you're you know you're two point you see you're past your five so you're two point five and then you're past your halfway mark to six so you're two point five five and then this small number here eight so it's two point five five eight inches We'll write all those down for each journal. All right, we went ahead and measured all the uh, main journals. And uh, you kind of want to measure in like a couple different spots. Say like uh, if this is uh, 12 and 6, you might want to go like 3 to 9, you know. Just do like three different measurements. You can uh, move over like this way and this way a little bit on the journal if you want. Just make sure that you're, uh, you know, measuring in different spots to, to confirm everything's round. All the journals are round and uh, there's no like concave or convex spots, um, no taper or anything like that. So we've measured all the journals, verified uh, multiple uh, spots and they're all exactly 2.558 inches. 
And of course, we'll have to convert all these to metric because the bearings are all in uh, metric, not SAE. So. All right. So what we're going to do now, we have all the bearings, uh, all the main bearings back in place. The old ones. What we're going to do. All this is cleaned up. Going to reassemble the upper and lower block back together. We're going to torque everything up. We'll torque everything back up. That way we can check uh, these bearings, uh, dimensions to the uh, crankshaft journals. So you make sure you clean out all, or blow out all your bolt holes. And if there's a little trash in them. Uh, you want to um, run a tap. These are ARP uh, main studs. Uh, what we want to do is put all these main studs in uh, without any lube on the threads that go into the block because we don't want we don't want that turning anymore. We're torquing these up. We only want the nut to turn on. So, so put all these in. in we don't have this we have this drill set like really low and now we put our washers on put a little lube on the washers started by hand. Now this drill, uh, we're just going to use this drill to run these down the rest of the way and to start to pull uh, the lower block together with the uh, upper block. All right, with these, uh, these main studs, I'll do three steps. Uh, the target is uh, 60 foot-pounds max. So we'll, we'll just do 20, 40, 60, and, and basically the same pattern we, uh, the same pattern we did uh, when we tightened everything up, so. back and check them make sure you know and they're all holding yeah we're good to go Let's see if I can get it <clears throat> where the camera can see it here maybe but, uh, these tolerance tolerance is called for uh, at least factory call for late Around one and a half to two thousandths clearance. I'm not going to be able to do this for the camera can see it. Right around one and a half, something like that, somewhere there. So you, do, you, you, you can check. You can do the same thing like 12 and 6, you know, 3 and 9, and just go from there. Same thing on these.
There's other things you can do if if you pull it in one of these engines apart and everything's fine. There's a there's a basically a, a basically a bore code for all the main bores and also on the crankshaft. Uh, there's crankshaft journal codes and then rod journal codes. And the same thing on the block for the rods. There's a basically rod journal uh, uh, grade ratings. So you can go buy those as well, but I just wanted to kind of check behind, you know, everything and see how the factory, uh, how they to uh, do tolerances on everything. Break loose these um, main studs. So we can put the crankshaft in. Be a little easier to remove since there's no silicone on it. These four little spots here with these threaded holes make it a little easier. You probably just get it by hand. Yeah, like coming by hand. A lot more difficult with silicone. And now we're gonna we have, we have all the bearings uh, lube with some assembly lube. Uh, this is what I've been using for a little while here. It's a, a red line assembly lube. It lasts a long time. Just shake it up a little bit. On this bearing, so it kind of sticks. Sticks to the aluminum, doesn't move when I drop the crankshaft in. There's a, <clears throat> there's a little notch um, on the ends, and there's a machine part on the block, so you can't. Can't mess these up. They only go one way. When you uh, make these together, it's, uh, there's three of them in the uh, in the engine kit. But this is this one goes here in this little hole. There, aren't much, there isn't much to these. Some styles of pistons don't have uh, clearance on the spot of the skirt for oil squirters. Some engines may not use them at all. You know, certain like racing engines and things of that nature, or really high RPM engines. Thrust bearings down in there. You can see it right along this little step here. And along this groove. All the way to the end, you got to put a nice bead of uh, silicone.
do the same thing here. We'll go uh, 20, 40, 60. start clearancing these piston rings. Yep, we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.